Okay, yes, so I'm gonna be talking about uh, Bonsai. It's a verifiable NZK. I'm trying to use the new terminology here. Um, platform for a modular world. So Bonsai basically lets you prove massive computations um, for all kinds of applications. We're gonna talk about a bunch of those in this talk. Um, yeah. We are uh, also, it's now actually available uh, for testing. And uh, if, you wanna, if you want to ha get access to it, uh, there's actually a link at the end. And please feel free to apply. And Waking, if you're out there, yes, we will we'll get you a key. So I, I do want to mention briefly, Bonsai is built on top of the Risk Zero ZKVM or VVM. And I don't want to explain exactly what that is because I'm sort of assuming most people know what ZKVMs are. General idea is it takes a program in, produces a ZK proof. Um, and in this case, the Risk Zero ZKVM is a Risk V chip, sort of a virtual Risk V chip, which lets it run any kind of normal program. And people have built a whole bunch of interesting sort of hackathon applications on top of it. And we've just recently added this pretty amazing uh, capability we call continuations. This lets you split proofs into any number of chunks and prove them independently, which lowers memory requirements and um, yeah, lets you roll things up in parallel and prove arbitrarily long computations. So there's no longer any kind of cycle limit. So one of the things I was trying to think before I made this talk, you know, what, what are the themes of the modular summit and what's why things going on in blockchain right now? And this thought that came to me is that an ecosystem of any kind can be as decentralized as it as it can be. And so I think I started, me and my friends started the first, uh, the first makerspace in Seattle like 15 years ago. And the amount of sort of tragedy of the commons that went on in, in that situation and how difficult it was to manage, I really see it as a lack of collaborative tooling and ways to assign values to things that are, you know, a lot more fluid than the current tools at the time uh, supported. So I feel like the more we can all do to you know, build capabilities in this ecosystem, and especially focus on ones that allow us to collaborate with each other, uh, the, the more decentralized we can be and the more we'll be able to benefit from uh, the advantages of those things. So these are things that, that I think the modular ecosystem benefits from, sort of roughly, interoperability, capability, the ability to you know, do an, anything and run multiple execution layers. Uh, diversity, having lots of different projects, different um, clients for the protocols that are out there, et cetera, and then obviously customizability. So Bonsai is a general purpose, verifiable, and ZK computing platform, uh, which turns out is very useful to sort of enhance the capability of any system or protocol to do those kinds of things. Obviously, ZK is a huge part of many of the interoperability projects that have come out recently. On, and you can see how critical ZK technology has been for allowing multiple chains to actually communicate with each other in a low friction um, and efficient manner. Obviously, ZK has brought all kinds of capabilities to different ecosystems with all of the sort of ZK coprocessing that's going on and the kinds of things you can do with Bonsai. Uh, you can build more clients with ZK, and uh, you can also build fraud-proving systems uh, without doing any work, which I think lets people have a lot more agility when it comes to getting, you know, systems that might be too complex for ZK currently out onto the market in a way that, um, yeah, they can really serve their users. So all, all of the great things that you can do with ZK are obviously only useful if they're actually accessible to developers. 
So Bonsai is really focused on making the most advanced features in ZK and advanced cryptography available to all of the developers in the modular ecosystem across all blockchains and, and also off-chain. <coughs> Yeah, so we sort of always known we were going to build um, some kind of network uh, and or platform as a service type offering. But I think the thing that's really crystallized to me over the past 18 months of being in this space has been how important it is to actually, you know, build an ergonomic platform for developers, uh, especially when you're dealing with something um, as difficult as ZK. So Bonsai's goal is to make it as easy as possible to do the most things that you can with CK. So what that means for now, Bonsai is going to be a lot of things um, over time. Initially, uh, sort of version uh, that's available for testing now and will be uh, at sort of 1.0 status uh, in the fall. Uh, the sort of core of it is a high, uh, a high speed proving service that lets anyone yeah, submit proof requests for, for instance, running Linux programs on top of Cartesi, on top of Risk Five. Um, so you can actually verifiably prove the execution of Linux using something like Bonsai. Now you can do this on your own computer. It's just very slow. Uh, so Bonsai uh, has a much like a very very optimized machine in front of the singular executor part and then uh, can spread computations out to thousands of machines. Uh, and with that, very recently, I think <coughs> the prior fastest risk, uh, risk zero VM execution speed that we've seen was about 100 kilohertz. We're now up to 2.5 megahertz, so it's about 25 times faster. Um, and we'll, we really expect to see that number continue to go up over the, the near term. So it's really amazing how quickly you can prove some fairly out there things. And we'll talk about that in a bit. So we also have built out a proof relaying system. This is effectively it's focused on Ethereum chains for now. But this is a full foundry integration uh, and template that lets you and set of smart contracts that let you easily interact with Bonsai from, uh, from your smart contract. So along with that, um, in the past, we're a Stark-based system. We always have been. This produces proofs that are too big to economically verify on Ethereum. Uh, so we've built, this is brand new, and I'm very excited about it, a Stark to Snark translator for our proving system so you can uh, actually just post a single Groth 16 proof uh, for any risk zero computation. Yeah, in the future, we'll also let people save money by aggregating a bunch of proofs and sort of posting that for people. And that will still integrate completely with the sort of relaying infrastructure. Um, yeah, that will be coming up soon. We'll eventually probably make some kind of proof market. Uh, we already have a bunch of light client and ETH proving stuff uh, in the pipeline. Yeah, so there's going to be a lot more. OK, these are not just they're not really case studies. It's uh, some of our partners and, uh, and some of the I guess example applications and spaces we've started exploring on the application side. Uh, the first one, I talked about this in East Denver a little bit, was a central limit order book that utilized Bonsai to run uh, all of the matching logic off chain. So currently, uh, the version of this that we'll eventually release after we clean it up more um, basically works by having people place their vote. Their, sorry, their orders on chain, and then the smart contract does literally nothing with those except call out to Bonsai, where Bonsai ingests whatever orders have been placed, uh, whatever orders are open, uh, computes whatever matches exist, and then sends back uh, effectively a set of settled orders or orders that are no longer valid, et cetera. And so by doing that, we actually 
found that you know using this pattern, it's, it's about 100 times cheaper than sort of a pure EVM club would be, and actually cheaper than Uniswap V3 by two to three times. So uh, of course, you know, people always ask, why on earth would you build an order book in ZK? It's going to be too slow. I mean, obviously, you know, latency is a factor, and uh, and ZK is kind of slow, but this is runs you know pretty quickly, and you're also I'll talk about um, one of our partners that's doing some innovative work uh, to to combine ZK with some other techniques to resolve that. So this is uh, this is now available at uh, on our GitHub page under examples uh, slash voting I think or governor. Um, we just posted this. Uh, this is a full app built on top of this Foundry template I mentioned that integrates with existing DAO voting frameworks. So it's kind of a, it's an example of how you can use Bonsai to uh, effectively replace gas-intensive components of any application. And I was, I mean, I was <laughs> when people wanted to do this. I was kind of skeptical that it was going to be worth the time. It's actually 3x cheaper than um, than the original application. And I was really surprised yeah, to see that. If you then take this kind of concept and start integrating something like Celestia to store your votes, you start to like reach the capability to do a bunch of things on chain that were difficult before, especially when you couple okay. With, uh, with the count abstraction coming online, I mean, there's uh, hopefully people have seen some of the amazing demos people have built with this. Um, I really think there's going to be a lot more capability to build applications that actually use blockchains and people use them. So I'm really excited about the ability to have more information from people in a sort of ZK and pseudonymous manner, uh, coupled with identity feeds from Sysmo or anything like that. Um, yeah, so a nice thing about this, we were able to effectively build something that would interoperate with existing UIs and applications uh, in about three weeks with one person. Uh, so this kind of demonstrates the uh, efficiency gains of being able to use general purpose language uh, for your ZK development. And this is, this is a, a recent one that we've been very heavily working on um, as part of our our proposal to Optimism to help them with uh, ZK, which I'll talk about in a second. Um, and where we've gotten to now is that you can run an entire Ethereum block. At, we, there's still like this is missing some optimization for precompiles. This is using an existing uh, EVM. I think we support our EVM and Sputnik, and uh, we'll support the rest uh, at some point as well. Um, and yeah, so you can actually run uh, an EVM that's been fully audited and is in use in many other places directly on top of Risk Zero now. Uh, it takes quite a while, like the two to four billion cycles. Yeah, it takes about 15 minutes uh, on Bonsai. Uh, but that's going to go down uh, pretty rapidly, I think. So yeah, we're going to be in a place where we're looking at you know 20 cents maybe to ZK approve ETH blocks uh, for um, yeah, for full full size ETH blocks without needing to even think about writing an EVM or about compatibility with um, other smart contracts. <coughs> yeah, and we expect uh, people to start integrating this into various uh, roll app frameworks. Um, nobody's doing that quite yet, though, and I'm excited about it. OK, so I do want to talk about some integrations that we've been working on. Uh, and this is sort of a general category here. And I was on a panel Monday, I think, and people, one of the questions was, uh, OK, it's you know 10 years from now or five years from now, and ZK has lost to uh, optimistic approaches. Why? What happened? And I think, I don't think it's, a, it's an either or kind of question at all. I think optimistic approaches coupled with ZK approaches um, can produce a lot of value for the user in terms of supporting livelier applications. Um, and then, obviously, throwing ZK on top of that supports uh, fairly quick liquidity in and out of whatever sort of applications you're using. Um, so yeah, so LayerN, the team over there, actually built 
a sort of example of a, actually they're pretty far along, of a fraud prover uh, for their uh, order book. And they basically didn't have to do any work. You just run the matching engine yourself on data and produce a proof that you know, the results that got posted on chain aren't the actual results. So this lets you run your order book or any kind of application sort of at the frequency uh, that you desire, and then gives an opportunity to kind of use ZK to, to tie it all up and give, give everyone confidence that everything's in the right shape uh, moving forward. And yeah, and indeed, this is a lot of what Optimism wants to do with the, their sort of ZK support for Optimism, which I'm very excited that uh, us, along with uh, the awesome team over at O1 Labs, were both selected to work on this. So very, very excited about that. Um, one of our partners uh, from sort of the earliest days of, of our company and theirs has been the Sovereign team. They're building the Sovereign SDK, which is a rule app framework that's highly aligned with the modular ecosystem. I really love what they're doing. Uh, they basically made a very sensible way to program blockchain applications in pure Rust. Uh, has tons of flexibility, and then they kind of take care of all of the difficulty of um, figuring out which parts of the modular stack to use, where, uh, and um, yeah, and which ones. So RISC0 is going to be uh, one of their first adapters that actually supports doing ZK computations for uh, sovereign apps. Very excited about that. And um, yeah, what else did I want to say? Uh, also, one of uh, uh, our great uh, sort of partners and people we collaborate a lot with is the team over at Eclipse. They're building a uh, roll-up framework as well. Uh, the work we did with them uh, so far has been limited to uh, a pretty amazing project, which is turning, um, yeah, effectively doing ZK Solana executions by turning uh, Risk Zero into an eBBF um, prover. So we got pretty far with that, um, and really looking forward to you know, starting to give people the ability to migrate code from Solana to wherever they want it to run, or doing rollups on Solana, even though, you know, in theory, you don't need them. So one of the most recent uh, sort of hackathon winners, I think this was, yeah, this was at ETH Waterloo, um, built a really amazing and fairly, I wouldn't say. It's not simple. I mean, they did it in a hackathon. And it's effectively a demonstration of using um, some new authentication standards along with ZK to let you immediately sort of make a wallet that's based on a biometric identifier. OK, yeah, thanks. Um, yeah, so this lets you make wallets without worrying about seed phrases or anything like that. And you can see this as a sort of amazing entree into uh, making crypto accessible for a lot more people. And that's, um, yeah, that's pretty much all I have. There's a bunch of links here if people want to get to know more about Bonsai, what we're doing, and if you want access to the Bonsai API, you can go ahead and apply at that link up there. Thank you. <laughs>